Hey guys, what's up? Lear the Lance Corporal here, and this is just a little preview on the Orange DLC, which has been dubbed the Laws of War, and I've just been in the current development build, kind of just taking a look at it, and what I can really gather here is it's uh, humanitarian stuff in Arma 3, which I find kind of interesting how a war simulator would include something like this, but I can see the aspects of it. Uh, I've got friends in the Peace Corps and whatnot, and I understand that, you know, there is aftermaths and different effects of war and whatnot. And as a Zeus, there's a lot we can actually do with this stuff. Uh, I know I've talked to a lot of people saying that this is probably going to be some empty DLC with not that much, but I've been looking through it lightly, and we're going to, you know, take a bit of a first look right here into what we have. And I just want to, I'm going to point a few things out. And, um, you know, we're just going to focus on the IDAP, which is a new civilian faction. And they've got quite a lot of stuff going for them. But without further ado, let's look at uh, some of the equipment they have to offer. So I'm going to spawn in some IDAP stuff. They've got an equipment box. Explosives, which I find a bit interesting. Supply box. And some uniforms. So just taking a look out of this stuff. Got a good variety of helmets, caps, backpacks, EOD vests, some uh, identification vests. Interesting. They've got this nice little orange hand-in-hand -hand symbol. But, you know, it's pretty interesting for what they have to offer. Explosive-wise training mines. Oh god, this can only go well. Can I plant one? This should be good. <laughs> You're kidding, right? Like, this won't blow up or anything. This is literally just a training. It's a thing that gives a dud. So let's let's think of some practicality for this puppy. Um, we're going to have a lot more minefields, but I'm probably going to put these things down instead, just as deterrence to the player base. But uh, imagine some sort of AO, because these have the same symbol as Aper's Bounding Mines. Let's say I wanted to do an AO in Zaros. Now it has this big open area over here on the eastern flank. What if I just made a giant field of training mines? Hold on. Are those in the interface yet? Oh god, there's a bunch of new mine signs as well. That'll be nice. Yeah, I mean, compared to our little... Dainy sign. Now we can make minefields a lot more obvious. That's actually very nice to see. But I'm looking for those damn training mines. So we have the Aper's Mine Dispenser. Which literally... This actually looks pretty nice, but... To get off track here. Bunch of unexploded ordnance as well, but training mines. Alright. So if I were to hypothetically... Take a training mine... Like a shit ton of them. Yeah, I could just make a minefield of fucking training mines and the player base would not know the difference. Because with regular difficulty, especially for what we do on Fridays, you get this red triangle here if they've got a mine detector, but they'd actually have to go up and visual. Ah. Uh... Okay, that's that's interesting. I was expecting, I wasn't expecting that. So I can just jump scare the player base instead of well, I can kill them with heart attacks. <laughs> ah, but at least the triangle goes away, right? Yeah. So also goes away on the interface. Can we re-add that for a second? That was apparently we can't re-add it either. This is the destroyed texture. All right, that was not what I was expecting. That's <laughs> touche. All right, looking at the rest of the stuff here. So we've got training mines for explosives and the supply crate. Uh, some generic supplies, identification vests, messenger bag. Let's see what this looks like. It's literally just 
a Schlein backpack. Okay, it's not bad. And then in here, what do we got? Bunch of vests. Since they're civilian, I think anyone can put these on. But this really opens the door for what if you wanted to do, like thinking of military aspects, and since I'm uh, going to be doing a syndicate campaign really soon, how can we blend the syndicate and aid workers together to, you know, do some dastardly things? So this has all the gears turning in my head for this syndicate campaign I'm working on. And I'm actually very, very excited for it. I want to get through my little AAF campaign first, but that's going to be after the uh, next two weeks for finishing up the Maladin campaign. But let's, uh, let's look at some more stuff within the IDAP. Let's just go down the list. So hats. We have a black hat, an orange hat. And a white hat. Lovely. Uniforms. Six different uniforms. That's not bad. You know, a good variation here of what we've got. Vests. We have the EOD vest and the... I guess that looks like just... Yeah, the identification vest. I guess that's a simple vest. But I want to look at something here. Uh, let me quickly arsenal one of these puppies. I want to see the stat comparison of, let's say, so right here, we've got this on, Explosive Resistance and Ballistic Protection, and we can have one without the IDAP logo. Now, what if we go to this puppy? The polar opposite, so you can have one with full ballistic protection and that. Or you could switch it over. It has a lot less load, but it's literally impervious to explosives. Huh. It's an interesting type of armor here, but... Ah, look at that. So as you can see, stat-wise, the EOD vest is really just uh, a carrier GL rig, but with... Uh, if we look at the exact stats again. Less weight and less load. Which is actually... That could still be utilized in combat. Because let's say you want to play a low weight character because you're focusing on stamina. You could just use one of these puppies instead of a GL rig. And then just have more focus on your backpack or whatnot. Because what I like to do on some missions is I put my backpack down in like a defensive op. And I use it as a loot cache. But using that for like a Bergen or something. Interesting. Again, it's a first look, so I'm just giving out a bunch of different possible ideas, but, you know, it's good to get the gears turning to think of, you know, what we can get. We also have a Coyote Variant and an Olive Variant. Hmm. Red Crystal. Oh, this just makes you look like a target. Where have I seen that symbol before? I could have sworn... Okay, it's different from this symbol, but it looks a lot like the scientist symbol. I know I've seen that red diamond before, though. But it's not the scientist that I was thinking of. Maybe there was some connection there I wasn't getting, but... Regardless, that's pretty interesting. Let's go back to IDAP and look at what else they've got. So we got the EOD vest. Let's look at the different vehicles here. Looks like they're all going to have their custom logo, off-road, an ambulance. Oh god, the life servers are going to love this. <laughs> Cargo. Huh. You could put, like, food in there with custom compositions. A transport van. Some X. Transport cover. And then a water. Interesting. So uh, recently, about a month ago, I did do two ops portraying to taking out water supply and infrastructure. So I've actually having a water vehicle, that's interesting to say the least. Ah, uh, now this is what everyone's been going nuts for. The drones. I don't know their exact capability, but let's, uh, let's do a comparison here of the different drones we're going to have now. So this is our standard. This is the new one. Which I'm assuming these are EOD dispensers, or maybe those are unexploded ordinances, or mine dropping, I don't freaking know, but interesting to say the least. They've got their own UGV as well. Oh, that's cute, it has a no weapons on it. <laughs> I'll put that away. 
still has room for one person. I guess this is like an anti-EOD vehicle or something to transverse stuff. Utility drone and a utility medical drone. So what do these actually have? Since they have crates under them. So they have medical supplies in them. Interesting. And this one, I'm assuming, doesn't. Yeah, disassemble. You could literally just have one of these as a floating backpack. Put it, like, three kilometers above the AO and have explosives. Just put, fill this thing with explosives. Load it in the, uh, you know, have it in the AO. And when you need explosives, just call it down to your position. There's a lot of cool shit you can do with this DLC. Interesting. Uh, back to the IDAP. This puppy, what is she? Okay, immediately. Yeah, so it's just a retextured mohawk, but... They get their own fat little transport chopper. That's pretty nice. Uh, cargo. So ruins. They've got ruins for cargo containers. That's cool. Advertisements. I guess we can use these to mark their territory or something. They've got a banner and they also have a flag. All right. Not bad. Warning sign. Okay. This is definitely like Red Cross human or yeah. Red Cross. Forget the other organization, but IDAP International Development A Project. Peace Corps. They're, this is basically Peace Corps. That's what I'm trying to point out. Medical tents. Yeah, so this is just the medical logo. That's where I know it from. Uh, this actually resembles a lot of the Arma 2 tent stuff. Medical tent, so shelter tents. And then that here. Let me see if we can... Can we go in these things? Oh, they're just giant freaking crates. Okay. Not what I was expecting there. What about you? Are you a giant crate too? So. Huh. Okay, so it's basically just a giant box. This one we can't go into. It's a closed off shelter. This one you can. It's not a crate, though, and then this is just a giant floating tent. Alright, not bad. Now, if I were to take a vehicle and, like, put it on, would it break? Yeah, so... Easily destroyed. Oh, shit. Okay, well, um... They're stronger than camo nets. <laughs> Definitely stronger than camo nets. Okay. What else do we got here? We got their supplies. They also have a cargo net storage. It's got the logos on it. Special equipment. Okay. Take a look at that in a sec. What the hell is this? PC set. I cannot... Is this like supposed to be a mouse pad or something? Oh, it says mouse pad IDP. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm retarded. Alright, then humanitarian box, humanitarian aid, box. So basically, food and supplies, brown box. Destroyed. Brown open. And then we also have food sacks. So basically, yeah, again, a bunch of humanitarian stuff, but... Hold on, I'm also curious here. Is this... Can I give this an inventory? Or would I have to code that in? Okay. What about these? These are just textures. All right. We'll take a look at this, too. What do we got in here? GPS is civilian UAV terminal. I'm assuming that's what we use to get onto UAV. Smoke grenades, UAV backpack for utility stuff. Interesting. What do these look like? Nice. Okay. 
bunch of new safety vests as well, or those might be from the uh, aircraft carrier. All right, so that's where they get the drone. Let's keep looking here. Uh, towards the bottom, and then cargo containers. You've got medium, short, long, a few different colors. You also have these small boxes. Are any of those inventory capable, or would those have to be coded? I'm hoping they do. Yes, okay. So this is nice. Very nice, all right. And then can we get into these? No, we can't. Okay. Not bad. I know there was a lot of rumors going around that it was going to create a new military faction. And there are pros and cons to stuff like that, but... I'm thinking in terms of what I want to do in the future, this is definitely going to help improve the content of what I want to do. Let's also... I oh, hope that's some custom code right there, but... Let's take a look at Arsenal right here. What else do we have? Sort by mod, that way we can get. So no new weapons. Nothing new there. No new pistols. It's expected. Again, the six. Oh, there's a lot more than six. Jesus. Paramedic. Gorilla Garment. Olive. I think this is a glitch, because that's not supposed... That's probably not supposed to be that way. Then again, maybe it is. Maybe Olive. That's maybe AAF. I don't know. It's interesting. I, so, that's why. These are only IDAP, construction workers. So... A lot more focus on the civilian aspect. Sort by mod again. Yeah, so these are new safety vests just for that multi multi pocket vest, like strap EOD vests. Interesting, interesting. In terms of backpacks, quite a bit here. The UAV bags. AL6 medical. The heck is an AF6? Here, we'll take a look at that. Not holding a weapon, I don't know what that means. Ready for orders. Ready. Yeah, so Pel yeah, Pelican drones. They're basically Amazon drones. These can be utilized to have inventory in them. They can basically be used as R and R points in the field. That's going to be very, very useful in a squad leader's perspective. To know that you can literally put up like 20 drones with a bunch of different supplies and have your drone operator not only coordinate recon, but coordinate drones. Better than just having a drone operator have a few up for, you know, recon and strap a few bombs with ace to a few for uh, explosive ordnance. <laughs> uh, where were we here? They're on backpacks, so that's interesting. Helmets, let's see what we got. Mod. Quite a few, actually, so... Some basic helmets here. Caps, ear protection. Oh god, what if... What if Arma added the ace hearing, the ringing in the ears to the base game? That would suck. Hard hats for the construction workers. Quite a few different colors here. Oh, shit. Head bandage. Damn, they're really going for immersion here for humanitarian. Press helmet. This helmet with neck protection. Wireless earpiece. Basically, Bluetooth. <laughs> Respirator. Basically humanitarian breathing safety goggles then wireless earpiece for so you can wear a wireless earpiece with a wireless earpiece <laughs> sure okay you can wear double the wireless earpieces
Alright, and then the UAV terminal for civilians. Not bad. But nothing new otherwise. Anything real new in here? Probably not, because there's no new guns. Uh... Okay. Oranges. Oh, this is what that mod does. So it basically turns all of my... <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> so there's a, there's a very popular mod on Steam right now for the development build that basically, for the orange DLC, it turns all the Aper's Mines and has a bunch of orange-themed items. I'll put a link for it in the description, but... Let's take a look at this. Orange bombs, a perspective orange. This is perfect. You get pumpkins and oranges. Oh, that's nice. They have their own destroyed animation right there, too. It's just a block. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. That's great. And then let's look at the uh, Apers... Mind Dispenser, I believe is what it's called. That's another thing that's getting a bit of buzz here. If I can find it. Okay, let me look up how to spell Apers properly. We can just probably look up Mine. So here's a Mind Dispenser. And here's a Mind Dispenser Mine. Those don't sound too promising. What if I... Oh. And then let me guess, if I put, you know, some poor schlob here. Waiting. On the way. Ooh, those are nice. Awaiting orders. Standing by. So basically, anti-personnel mind dispensers is what we've got here. That's nasty. And they don't come up on the Zeus interface. That's even nastier. Okay. Okay. And then there's some stuff about carpet bombing and whatnot. I want to see this in action, too. So those are the mine dispensers. Training mine. What the heck is a UXO? I'm assuming this is some sort of uh, unexploded shell right there. Sensitive. Delayed. Okay, tough. And they're also redoing some air stuff, but... You know, for Vanilla, that's actually some really good explosive sound effect design. I'll give them that. That sounds pretty cool. Ready. Can on you step way. on them? Maybe it's only... Let's do a common. Okay. Okay. Let's not do a common. <laughs> let's try that again. Ready. So I think this is just by touching, but I think he's gonna... Yep. Okay, but the tough one, I think they can step Wait. on it just fine. On the way. Yeah. So tough would probably be a vehicle. So let's take a simple car. Alright. Waiting orders. Roger. Yeah, so, basically, AP, 
delayed. I'm assuming that's just, you know, that's kind of obvious in the name. How delayed? Roger that. Okay, so about six seconds, not even, about five, four, could be randomized. And then sensitive, I think we can all figure Ready out which one that means. I Roger mean. that. Yeah, so it basically means it has a bit of a bigger range, so... We basically have a new type of expl vanilla explosive slash IED to use in the field. Now, I'm also curious about this. Do we have a new type of fire support up? Nope, because I'm looking forward to those cluster bombs they've been talking about. Because then some of these assets are also Achilles, but I guess I don't see it there. Otherwise, nothing new for Zeus. Okay. Then everything else, I guess we'd have to dig around and find, but that's, uh... What if we try typing in cluster? Oh. This is gonna require me to actually fly. Yay. So, fun facts. Uh... I forget the exact treaty, but there is a treaty out there that basically ha uh, says that you can't use cluster munitions, but the U.S. never signed it. So, legally, in the world perspective, the U.S. can still use cluster munitions. So, let's... Got our minigun, laser marker, AAMR, cluster bomb. Okay, that is some lethal shit. Holy crap, that is amazing. Now, I'm also curious to see, is there any sort of, like, fail rate here? Like, you know, I would think we'd have... Now, these are just the demolished buildings themselves, but... I would think that since there's unexploded cluster munitions, that there would be a chance that the cluster bombs, they'd fall, they wouldn't demo, uh, they'd actually instead, you know, turn into mines, which is what the unexploded munitions are all about. I would like to see that feature, if it would be possible. Because, based on what I saw, these are definitely... You know, the munitions for it. But I would love to see that. So let me let me take a line up here. So it looks like each faction has a different type of cluster munition here. But there is no way to tell visually which one is which. Interesting. Very interesting. Okay. Yeah, I think I've seen everything. But, um... Yeah, so, practicality. Again, I've already mentioned the Syndicate campaign a bit, and there is some use for there. For vanilla stuff, I mean, those cluster bombs, good god. Uh... That should be your answer there. That literally annihilated half a town. And that was me blind firing it for fuck's sake. I mean, <laughs> I'm still I'm still reacting to that. That's great. That's crazy. That's gonna be wickedly OP. Uh, just guess for a quick recap of what we can do here. Uh, first off, drones. You know, 
We already saw these can be uh, basically delivers of supplies and whatnot from base. You could have a guy who controls a mortar in the back, you know, resupply drones and set them up to the field. And all this can be coordinated by a single drone operative. We've got vehicles here that add to a humanitarian aspect. Ambulances, I can think of a few very evil anti-Geneva convention ops to do with that. Same with these supplies and whatnot, especially for the syndicate campaign coming up. But there's... There's a lot to work with here. Uh, this is, I will admit, probably going to be a bit of a disappointment for a lot of people who are expecting something more. But from a Zeus's POV, there is a lot we can do with this mod. It's not the it's not the best addition I'm gonna say for Arma, but it's definitely gonna add some unique shit. I guess we'll just have to wait till the full release before we start seeing it. But a lot of these things can be, you know, have their own little flair. They can become the actual op idea or strategy with it. I do love the fact that there is a bunch of added, you know, unit types, you know, drones. You could just firing off on the head. Cargo. I could make an op where you have to take some of these cargo trucks and I could load them in with these supplies here and you could say for the syndicate op or, you know, for a rebellion op, this is how you get supplies for your guys. Same with the water trucks. Going to the drones. Again, resupply stuff. You can use these drones for anything. Helicopter. Standing by. Meh, it's just a helicopter. And then men with these aid workers, paramedics, you could, you know, do kidnapping or rescue guys with uh, rescue operations with these different forces. It's... It's a mixed bag. It definitely will add some variation to vanilla ops for sure. Modded ops, there's going to be some few. I will definitely be using the fuel truck and whatnot. Oh, you know what I could do for modded ops? If you guys know things like, if, if you know the term Big Bessie, for example, you know that that's a missile truck within a civilian truck. Oh, I could make a new batch. I could make Mark III of Taliban and ISIS vehicles, but with humanitarian vehicles. Oh, that would be nasty. <laughs> All right, guys. I think we're pretty much done with the first look here. This is... There's a lot we can do here. There's a lot we can work with. There's a lot of trolling that can be done, especially with these damn training mines. But I think this is definitely going to help elevate my content. You know, not not fully, not on its own, but it'll definitely help. And I think any Zeus is going to tell you the same thing without too much ass kissing or being too cynical, in my opinion. Because I've already seen a few reviews from other people and they don't really talk about practicality too much, but whatever. That's just me. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Go operate operationally. Feel free to say in the comments below what you think I can do with this mod. But I'm already thinking of plenty of evil ideas. So anyway, guys, have a blast and take care.